Why use data at all? It's really important that you delve into the data when looking at investing because you might know your area, you might know your street, and you might know what properties sell for around that street. But when you're looking at investing outside of your area of expertise, it's important that you go to the numbers. So the most important type of data is common sense. And the model we're gonna talk about today, if you looked at somewhere like the West Coast, you would see that the values are 30% under where we expect they might be on a long-term average. But the population there is about 37,000 and dropping and industry suffering. The reason that the West Coast might not be a great investment is that if people are leaving and there's no demand for rentals or people to buy houses, then prices drop from a purchase price standpoint, but also from a rental standpoint. Because if you can't find a tenant for your investment property, that's a problem. The reason that you invest in main centres is because generally there's higher populations there and you've got a more diversified economy. So for instance, if something like a sawmill shut down in a smaller region, that has a massive effect on house prices and whether or not people want to rent there. Whereas if you look at a major centre, if one industry suffers, it's unlikely that all industries suffer at the same time. As an investor, this is important because it gives you more stable housing demand and it means that you've got a greater pool of tenants and so you reduce your risk. From my personal perspective, I think the areas which have the greatest investment opportunity are Auckland, Wellington, Christchurch and Hamilton. Different cities and regions perform at different rates at different times. So for example, in the last few years, Christchurch and Auckland have been relatively flat, while Wellington's been booming ahead, same as Hamilton. So you've got to remember, property cycles occur at different times in different areas. The way a property cycle works is that you see fits and starts of growth. You might see a period of no growth or low growth or even a slight drop. Then you might see some rapid catch up growth and then a leveling out, a slowdown. When you look at the long term or if you look at different regions, it might look like it's all going up. But the actual fact is that sometimes different markets perform at different rates. How do I spot an opportunity in a property cycle? Let's look at Canterbury. Over the long term, Canterbury's median house price represents about 88% of what the value of the national median house price is. At the moment, you'll see that Canterbury is about 75% of the median house value. This means that it's about 15% under where it has been historically, and so I think there's some room for growth here. So what do I think will happen in Canterbury? I think there'll be some drastic catch-up growth in the coming three or four years to make it more in line with where values have been historically. Now the reason that picking an opportune time in the market is important is because if you buy in a market where it's going to be flat for the next five years, that could stop you with your next purchase. And so whilst property tends to go up over a longer period of time at a similar rate, you want to be choosing a market where you're going to get the growth as soon as possible. Of course, with every investment, there's no guarantee. So it's just using the data to make the most rational decision that you can. Once you have a region that you want to invest in, then you've got to delve deep into the suburb data. And different suburbs will have different growth and different yield, and we try and find a balance of this. Take Auckland, for example. The highest growth in the last 20 years is a place called Westmere, and that's had 8.8% average growth. When you look at Auckland Central, on the other hand, that's had the lowest at 4.5% average growth over the same 20 years. So what does this mean in dollar terms for your investment? Well, if Auckland Central had had the same growth as Westmere, that 8.8, Auckland Central investors would be almost $700,000 better off had they invested in Westmere. When you're choosing a suburb, it makes a huge difference. Now, I'm not saying you should go and invest in Westmere now because it may have had its growth already. I'm just saying you need to choose the right area to invest in. Now let's look at yields because this is really important from a cash flow perspective because a property has to be affordable to hold over the long term. If we take Westmere again, the average gross yield there is 1.8 at the moment. 
If you take Auckland Central West, it's 5.6. And so the reason this is important is because you can't just choose a suburb based on one factor. You've got to actually look at the whole balance and you've got to have a hit list when you're choosing a property that's going to make a suitable investment for the long term. When I'm using these maps, there are three key things that I'm looking for. First of all, I'm looking for the historic growth because this shows that there might be fundamentals which would support future growth. Second thing I'm looking for is what the gross yield is, because this is an indicator of an affordable place to buy for an investment. The third thing I'm looking at is what the median value is, because I want my investments to be in the mid-range price point so that it appeals to the masses when I sell that later on. So what's the next step? Once you've done your research and you've got your hit list of what's going to make a good investment property for you, that's when you start to delve into actual properties that meet your criteria. And again, remember, you've always got to refocus and look back at what your reference points are to make sure that a property you look at does meet those criteria.